Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to another Sunday service, virtual Sunday service at the Harvest. And we give God praise and glory for all the Lord has done for us. We thank God for allowing us to see another Sunday that we have never seen before. For we give him praise and we give him glory and we worship him. For the Lord is mighty and the Lord is wonderful. The song says it's not about us, but it's about Jesus. Put your hands together if you know that it's not about us, but everything we do is all about Jesus. Come on, put your hands together right there. Oh, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, I see our deck clapping. We're gonna bless him today and gonna give him glory. Come on, family. It's not about us, not about us. But it's about Jesus. But it's about Jesus. Yes, it is. Yeah. It's not about you. It's not about you. Yeah, but it's about Jesus. But it's about Jesus. Come on, say it again, y'all. It's not about us. It's not about us. Hey, yeah. But it's about Jesus. But it's about Jesus. Everything we do, it's not about it's you. It's not about you. But it's about Jesus. But it's about Jesus. Come on, here we y'all can say this with us. Come on, I present my body. I present my body. And every sacrifice. And every sacrifice. Holy acceptable. Holy acceptable. Unto you, Christ. Unto you, Christ. Everything I am. Everything I am. And everything I be. And everything I be. And everything I, be. I lay it all at your feet. I lay it all at your feet. Oh, it's not about us. It's not about us. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But it's about Jesus. 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 But 
it's about Jesus. But it's about Jesus. But it's about Jesus. But it's about Jesus. But it's about Jesus. But it's about Jesus. But it's about Jesus. But it's about Jesus. But it's about Jesus. But it's about Jesus. But it's about Jesus. But it's about Jesus. But it's about Jesus. But it's about Jesus. But it's about Jesus. Bless him and we give him the glory because it belongs to him. Can you make some noise in the building if you know that is it? Come on, one more time, everybody. It's not about us. 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 But it's about Jesus. But it's about Jesus. It's not about us. 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 But it's about Jesus. But it's about Jesus. Listen, I know you are wonderful. I know some people think you're all lavish, but guess what? Even in all your sassiness and all you got your nails done and your hair done and your feet did, it's okay, it's cute, but guess what? You look wonderful, but can I tell you something? Everything we do, it belongs to God. Everything we are belongs to him, because guess what? In everything we do, he gets all the glory. Is that right? So guess what? Look to your neighbor say, neighbor, I know you look wonderful. Tell him, I know you're doing everything you can to give God all your praise. But tell him in spite of whatever you're going through, it's not for you, but tell him it's for the next person. So guess what? Everything that we do is not about us. It's all about Jesus in the way we walk, in the way we talk. Hey, come on, everybody, listen. It's not about us. 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 But it's about Jesus. 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 Where we go. But it's about Jesus. Thing we do. But it's about Jesus. 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 Oh, y'all came with y'all praise, I see. Put your hands on it. Hey, oh, hey. Uh oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Can we do it one more time? Hey, it's not about us. 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 It's not about your cars. It's not about us. It's not even about your home and your children. It's not about us. 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 But it's about Jesus. 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 Oh, clap your hands if you know that it's about him. Everything we do and say belongs to him. Hallelujah. Come on, give him glory right where you are. Amen. At some point in our life, there's something that shakes us up and let us know that all of our praise belongs to the Lord. That all of our thank you, Jesus, belongs to the Lord that all of our hallelujah belongs to the Lord because I often hear grandmama used to say if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side where would I be today so while we stand here today we let the Lord know that our hallelujah belongs to him You 
Traditional churches call it the Mission Sunday, and we thank God for this Mission Sunday. We thank God for all of you. Uh, we want you to pray for Brother Ronald McGee on the drums. He lost his father, and we're certainly praying with him. Also, we certainly want you to know that um, the homegoing celebration of our um, brother, uh, Sister Barbara's son, will be here um, September 5th, I believe, at 2 o'clock. Continue to pray for Barbara family as well. Amen. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. Amen. Out there on Facebook, it's good to be online one more time. It's good, amen, to connect with your places of worship by way of social media. Amen. I have a word for you. I don't know if you're going to like it, but it's a much, much needed word. And I told you I was going to go here about a month ago. Uh, James. James. The book of James, chapter 2. Salute all of our deacons, ministers, officers, and friends. Thank you so much. And we certainly uh, want to wish um, Deacon Blocker's wife, my uh, mother in love, and Sean and Dawn mother, uh, 
Dolores Block a, a very happy birthday. She celebrated on yesterday, and we certainly want to wish her a happy birthday across Amen social media. Amen. How many know in times like these, it's good to celebrate a birthday? <laughs> Can I say that again? Birthdays are different now. If God lets you see a birthday, you ought to be happy and rejoice that God had let you see another year. James 2, a lot of reading, hope not a lot of preaching. Um, we're going to focus on verses 1 through 10. James 2, verses 1 through 10. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect to persons? For there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring in goodly apparel. And there come in also a poor man in vile raiment. And ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place. And say to the poor, Stand thou there, or sit here under my footstool. Are ye not then partial in yourselves, and are be become judges of evil thoughts? Hearken, my beloved brethren, have not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him? But ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats. Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by the which ye are called. If ye fulfill the royal law according to scripture, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Ye do well. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. For whosoever shall keep the whole law, uh oh, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Ten verses. James, half brother of Jesus. Second chapter, we know God's word is already blessed. May bless the hearers and doers of his already blessed word. I want to share with you, my brothers and sisters, from an unpopular subject. I want to talk about conquering prejudice with love. Conquering prejudice with love. Look how quiet it got. Amen. Conquering prejudice with love. Last week, we dealt with the evidence of love, the experience of love, and the expression of love. James, the half-brother of Jesus, who has the reputation of not holding punches, James would tell you like it is. is. James did not pull on his relationship as a brother when it came to Jesus, but James pulled on Jesus being his Lord and Savior, and James being a servant of the Most High God. James realized at the end of the day, although my brother is Jesus, I'm still a servant. Can you look at your name and say, don't let your relationships get it twisted. James says something so for Nicky. James deal with partiality and prejudice in the early church. Uh-oh. Revealing such attitudes were sinful. James was dealing with partiality and prejudice in the early church, revealing that such attitudes were sinful. The divide in our nation continues to grow. We have been divided to the point, amen, now it's polarized. Amen. We don't like who other people like based on who they like. Uh, Y'all getting quiet on me. Some of you, amen, see a bumper sticker that says Trump on somebody's car. And you've already sized them up, amen, and have come to the realization that that person can't be no good. And it's interesting, it's interesting because when we had our Obama stickers, they did the same thing. Y'all mighty quiet in here. And, 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 and as we uh, gave out food, it was a truck came in with a big Trump flag. And I said to myself, how many people who don't support Trump will treat this man in the line differently because he's flying a Trump flag, but we call ourselves Christians? 
I, I, I'm talking about church folk now. I ain't talking about, amen, amen, the unbeliever. I'm talking about the believers. Many of believers, amen, criticize folk that are prejudiced when we practice prejudice ourselves. And I discover it really ain't all black and white. Y'all going to get mad now. It's really not about black versus white or white versus black. Can I tell you what it's really about? It's about wrong and right. Because there are some right black people, mm -hmm, and there are some wrong black people. There are some right white people, and there are some wrong white people. Humans can be wrong or right no matter what color they come in. Y'all got quiet on me now. Amen. I don't care if you're fat or skinny, you could be wrong or right. I know y'all wouldn't like this one. Verses 1 through 4, here's my first point talks about the practice of prejudice. In these verses, James addresses the existence of prejudice within the church. That ought to, that ought to, sound, that, that ought to sound crazy. I said James addresses the existence of prejudice within the church. That's an oxymoron to me. I'm not idealistic. I'm just saying, if you call yourself a Christian, you ought not be practicing prejudice. Here it is. Here's, 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 the, here's, the, here's the admonition. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect to person. James rebuked the church for portraying faith in the Lord while possessing partiality and prejudice at the same time. Can I say that again? James rebuked the church for portraying and professing faith in the Lord while possessing partiality and prejudice at the same time. They were not to honor or favor one particular group above the other. They could not have an effective witness for Christ and be prejudiced at the same time. I'm going to wait on y'all because I see y'all taking long to come to me. Amen. You cannot say you love God. You cannot say you have faith in God and practice prejudice. Come here, evangelicals. <laughs> Preach black man. You cannot say you love God. You cannot say you don't want unborn babies to die, but turn your head when black folks are dying every day. Look at your neighbor and say, wake up. You might want to hear this one. You cannot honor and favor one particular group above another. They could not have an effective witness for Christ and be prejudiced at the same time. Such prejudice would hinder their witness and tarnish their faith. Are you hearing me, Minister Washington? This simple truth has not changed, and it never will. Like the early church, we cannot please the Lord and provide an effective witness for faith if we harbor prejudice in our heart. Mm hmm You may not uh, agree with a particular candidate, but if that candidate supporter come through your food line, you still give them bread, you still give them milk, you still give them cereal, you still give them canned goods, you still give them a smile, and you still say, God bless you, because this country is too divided and polarized, and guess what? Christians are a part of the division. Yeah, yeah, he, he admonished them. He said, he say, for if they're coming to you in your assembly, a man with a gold ring, looking good, y'all. He got, he, he, he got bling bling on. He's shining. He, he got on some good suits. He, he got goodly. The Bible says he had goodly apparel. And, and there come also a poor man that don't look none near this rich man. And if you have respect to him that wear the gay clothing or the happy clothing or the nice clothing, I say unto you, sit and say, sit thou here in a good place and say to the poor man, stand here or sit here under my footstool. James offered an example of prejudice and partiality what that was taking place, wait for it, in the church. Those perceived as rich and prosperous were treated with respect and welcome into the services. Y'all getting quiet now. 
while those who didn't smell as good as the rich one, those that was less fortunate may have been allowed in. Yeah, y'all let them come in, but it's how you treat them when they get in here. I know I'm preaching better than y'all say amen. If somebody walk in here with a nice suit on, looking all good, amen. We cater to them, amen. But if somebody homeless walk in, we got our nose all tooted up. We don't want them to sit in certain places. We don't treat them like the other one. But then you always want to talk about somebody else being prejudiced when we practice prejudice right in the house of God. Mother walk in here with a, oh, how can I put this? With a, what's the name of that? A little house on the prairie dress on. Y'all think she saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, and fine baptized. Then another young lady will walk in with her moose something skirt on. Y'all rolling eyes, sucking teeth, and watching your husband watch her. Now she knows she shouldn't have came in with that on. Y'all know how we do it in the church. I'm not saying, hey amen, you got to wear anything in church, but I'm saying let's stop being so partial and stop being so prejudiced, hey amen. You don't know what she went through just to get here, and once she get here, she ought not receive prejudice. She ought to receive love and embrace because what's on the inside would eventually happen on the outside, but we can't clean a fish until we catch the fish. Can I get a witness in the building? Look at your devil and say, you trying to clean the fish before you catch the fish. Leave people alone because what you can't do, you can't do what the word can do. The word can clean them out inside out. Those that are perceived rich and prosperous are saved and got the, the Holy Ghost, you know, because you can fool people how you dress. Can, can, can y'all put this on Facebook? Never judge a book by its cover. Y'all ain't helping me. Amen. Some of us are prejudging books. Some of us, they don't even read books because we looked at the cover. And there's some valuable information on the inside. Can I talk to somebody out there in streamland? You may look a certain way on the outside, but God told me to tell you there's something valuable on the inside. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Can I tell you what it is? Such partiality was based upon preconceived notions and the outward appearance of men. Thank you, Brother James. Some of us have preconceived notions. That's why we can't give people the benefit of the doubt. That's where they get the word prejudice from, prejudging. We have pre conceive notions about certain people, about certain professions, about certain places, and we don't give people places or uh, uh, things and uh, a chance because of our preconceived notion. I got some bad news for y'all. Y'all don't know everybody, so how can you judge everybody and put everybody in the same boat? Can I help? Can I help the church? Unfortunately, this practice remains, even among the church. People are often judged based on the color of their skin, their ethnicity, or simply by their appearance. Mm -hmm. If they look like us, if they meet our expectation, they are welcome with open arms. But if they think different than us, or they look different than us, we have a preconceived notion. If they are deemed somehow inferior, they may be allowed in, but they are kept at arm's length. You can come in, but you'll never be a part of us. Y'all getting quiet on me. Here's the confirmation. Are you not 
then partial in yourselves. This is what he said in verse 4, y'all. And I become judges of evil thoughts. James continued his rebuke, revealing their active participation in prejudice and partiality. Some of us have an active participation in prejudice and partiality. Say that by six times. Some of us have active, amen, participation in prejudice and partiality, but we say we know God. They may not have been real. You may not realize it, but you have judged others based on appearances or other factors. You haven't waited to get to know them. You smoked them over, sized them up, and have your preconceived. Y'all got quiet on me now. We may not like to admit it, but such partiality remains today. Have we not made an assumption and pass judgment on someone based solely on our perception. We don't have no facts. It just look like something they'll do. It just sound like something they'll do. We reject the truth with documentation. That's the Bible. But believe a lie with no investigation. Let me, let, me, let me say it again. We reject the Bible, the truth, that has much documentation, but believe a lie without any investigation. I just believe they did it. I don't care. It just, they, just, they just move like they did it. And that's why a lie will run all around town before truth put his shoes on, preach man. Because if the truth be told, we really want to believe what we believe. We don't care about facts. We don't care about the truth. We have preconceived notions of people. Can you look at somebody and say, just give me a chance. Look at somebody else and say, just give me the benefit of the doubt. We made assumptions and passed judgment on someone based solely on our perception. If so, we have become partial towards specific expectation and we engage in prejudice. That's, that's the practice of prejudice. He, he, he laid out the practice. Somebody say the practice. And if you are practicing prejudice, check your card because you may not know the Lord. But here's the, here's the potential for prejudice, verses 5 through 7. Here James revealed the potential for prejudice within each of us. Uh-oh. You know what I like about that scripture when Jesus sat at the table and he said to them, one of you is going to betray me. He never named the rascal. But he said, one of you will betray me. And then all of them said, Lord, is it I? That's a teaching, that's a teaching moment. Because Jesus wanted them to know, and I, I want y'all to get off your high horse because some of y'all think you're just the victim and never the villain. But Jesus taught them, all of us have the proclivity and propensity to be the villain. People just don't hurt you, but you have the ability to hurt them too. But we can't acknowledge this. We don't acknowledge when we render hurt. We only acknowledge when we receive hurt. Lord, is it I? He wanted them to know everyone at this table has the potential to betray me. I don't care how much people say, I'll never do it, I'll never do it. You, be you better not listen to that because as long as they are human, they don't have to be black or white. As long as they are human, they have the propensity to be a betrayer. Here, James revealed the potential for prejudice with each of us. I didn't say with you. I say with each of us. We all have the potential, if we don't check ourselves, to be prejudiced. Verse 5, verse 5, Hearken, my beloved brethren, have not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he have promised to them that love him? Some within the church were judging others based on their lack of material wealth. And James declared these 
were chosen of God. The same ones you don't like. The same ones you're looking down on are chosen of God. Oh, I feel, a, I feel an anointing in this place. You better be careful how you look down at certain people. Because the same people you looking down on, God will use to pick you up. They may have lacked material possessions, but they were rich in faith. Look at somebody say, I'm rich. I'm filthy rich. I'm wealthy because of my faith. The church have been guilty of rejecting those chosen by God. Woo. I knew y'all wouldn't like this one. That's why, that's why some of y'all don't like me because I treat people equal. I don't care how much you put in the tithing pan. That don't get you no special privileges with Reverend G.D. Thompson, Jr. You may put a lot in, and some people may not put anything in. But I'm not going to cater to you and don't cater to them. I wish I had a prayer in church. That would be practicing prejudice. Because your tie didn't have nothing to do with me. That's between you and God. He told me to let the wheat and tear grow together. And he'll do the separating. Our problem is we try to do the separating for God. I declare and decree, you better let the wheat and the tail grow together because wheat and tail looks the same. And you may grab a wheat and it's a tail or grab a tail and it's a wheat. And many of us are hurting people because things may look like a... Ooh, but that don't mean it is. God knows the heart. Yeah, they were, they were lacking material possession, but the church was guilty of rejecting those chosen by God. They were rich in faith, possessing the ability to contribute to the church if only given the chance to be accepted. That's why I like coming to America. Because Eddie Murphy, he played broke even though he was rich. Oh, can I get a witness here? Because he didn't want that woman to love him for his possessions. He wanted the woman to love him for him. And guess what happened? When you love somebody for who they are, you may get a bonus because they may reveal, oh, y'all, that thing just hit me right in my spirit. We got to love people not based on what they have, uh, but based on who they are. And learn how to love not because of, uh, but learn how to love in spite of. It was a far difference from the lady in Africa who was standing on one feet barking. You would stand on one feet, jump up and down and bark if you know he was a prince too. But the lady in America had no clue that she was dating a prince. Can you help me, Minister Washington? Can I get a witness in the building? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you don't know, you don't know, you don't know what I really have. You better love me for me. And guess what? I may not have it now, but if you love me for me when my ship come in, I'll break bread with you. I'll share with you if I really know you love me for me. I'm telling you, love will conquer prejudice. I'm glad our Lord is not limited or persuaded by what dictates our culture. He sees things from an entirely different perspective. Y'all remember, says Samuel, look not on his countenance or on his height or his stature. They were looking for a king. And they went to David's daddy's house, and I think, if, I, if, if my the, theology is correct, they, they looked at Eliab, if I'm right, and they say, surely, <laughs> he's the king. Look how tall he is. Look how handsome he is. Somebody said, that's prejudice. He got to be the one. But how many know the oil didn't flow over Eliab and they asked him, do you have another? I'm paraphrasing, but look what the daddy said. Well, I do have one. 
But I don't think he's the one. He he's out in the field with the sheep. He he's ready. Y'all ain't helping me. He 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 ain't kingly. Y'all missed the point to shout. There's some folk overlooking you. There's some folk, amen, that done prejudge you and you the very thing they need, but they can't see it because they're looking with the eye. And God say, don't judge the way. I don't judge the way y'all judge. He say, look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature. If height was a qualification for me to be pastor, I would have been all out. Y'all missed that one. I'm going to say it slow. If I had to be 6'1 or 6'2 to be y'all pastor, I don't think I would have made the cut. But God said, don't look at his countenance, his height or his stature. He said, because I have refused Eliab. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh at the heart. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, stop looking at my appearance and check out my heart. Now I'm going to make you some mad. There are some white people with good hearts. Can me on Facebook? I'm looking right. There are some white people. People, white people with good hearts. <laughs> there are some black people with good hearts. But here's what y'all refuse to believe. There are also some black people with bad hearts. Like there are some white people with bad hearts. But all the blacks ain't the same and all whites are not the same. The Lord sees what man cannot see. He does not look at clothes. He does not look at the color of skin. He does not look at the money in your wallet. He looks at your heart. That's where the rubber meets the road. I don't care, I don't care how good your clothes is. I don't care how good your money is. I want to know how good your heart is. Because you can have on good clothes and good money and have a bad heart. And when you have a bad heart, it's going to produce bad ways. And when you have bad ways, it's going to produce a bad character. And when you have a bad character, it's going to produce a bad legacy. Y'all ain't helping me. And your fruits will follow you. And the works you do will, y'all ain't helping me. Amen. I don't care about your clothes, your cash, or your Cadillac. I want to know about your cardio. How's your cardio? What hope would any of us have if our salvation were based on our ability or the acceptance of others. I thank God he didn't have to save me and then let y'all vote on it. Can I say that again? I thank God when I gave the preacher my hand and gave God my heart, y'all didn't have to vote me into the plan of salvation. We must learn to view people from a gospel perspective. I said it once and I'm said it again. When you look at people, when you're judging or sizing or discerning, find what's good. Because even a broke clock is right two times a day. So when you tell me folk ain't no good, I'm going to give you some homework. That no good person you think will never be no good. Find something good about that person and then build on it. Stop running around telling people how bad people are and start telling people how good God is because if it had not been for God on my side, where would I be? We like to spread people's imperfections. But we seldom tell folk how imperfect we are. It is if 
we want to dim somebody else's light so we can shine brighter. And you don't have to do that. I'm helping you today. You can build on the good. Because I, I guarantee you, if you look, see, some of us will always find what we're looking for. If you're looking for bad in people, you're going to find bad all the time. Yeah, that's the potential for prejudice. We, we, we don't even know how to look. Here, here. 6A, 6A talks about the guilt, but ye have despised the poor. James did not sugarcoat. I told you James never sugarcoated it. James said you have despised the poor. He revealed their guilt and prejudice. Many had favored the rich and despised the poor. That is a stinging rebuke. The word despise has the idea of condemning and mistreating. That's what happens when you prejudge. You condemn and mistreat. Because if you prejudge and have a preconceived uh, 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 notion, you're not going to treat that person right. You're going to condemn and mistreat. Y'all getting real quiet. If you think somebody is something that they're really not, there's no way you're going to treat them right. You're going to condemn and mistreat. I never, I never forget. I worked at a, I worked at a rental car place, and and people would come in. And about the third or second, the second or third month, Deacon Blocker, I realized they had a white price, <laughs> and they had a black price. Oh, y'all got quiet on me now. Uh-huh. Somebody, non-white, comes in. The car was $50 a day. Somebody white, it was 25 So y'all know y'all pastor is a smart aleck. I went to the counter because I needed to rent a car, and I said, hey, give me the white price. Just to let them know, I know you're practicing partiality. They say, boy, you so crazy. No, I ain't crazy. I really want the white price. And how many know I got the white price? What are you saying? Sometimes, like James, we got to expose. If you're a Christian, sometimes we got to hold each other, amen, to do what's right and to hold each other accountable. Like what we were feeding, see, it's one thing to have a farm share, but it's another thing to share the right personality and the right love for people. You may not be in the line. But one day you might be in the line, and when, they, when you go through the line, you don't want nobody screaming and hollering and fussing at you, amen. You want somebody, amen, to pass it on and love, because if the truth be told, it ain't none of your food anyway. Y'all wouldn't like me. If you're going to do something good, do it good. <laughs> I preach, man. If you're going to be out there handing out food, put a smile on your face. If you want to fuss, just put it on the table and I'll give it to them. Partiality. We got to hold people accountable. They had condemned and mistreated those chosen of God simply because they failed to meet certain standards. That's our problem. We have certain standards and we want to hold everybody to our standards and we're living up to none. I'm going to say that slower for the people in the back. We have personal standards. Oh, I call them pet peeves. And we want to hold people to our pet peeves or personal standards when we are not fulfilling none, nada, nothing. That's hypocrisy. Have we not been guilty of something too? I'm going to say it again. I'm merciful and I'm forgiving not because I'm weak, 
I'm merciful and forgiving because I know I've been guilty too. Can I say that for the people in the back? I'm not weak. I'm not soft. Amen. I'm not a marshmallow, but I know, amen, that I'm not innocent. Amen. My hands are not clean. Y'all ain't helping me. God forgave me, so I have to forgive you. I know, amen, I've done some things, uh, and God has separated my sin as far as the east was from the west and threw it in the sea of uh, for forgetfulness. So I'm not going to keep a track record on you because God didn't keep a track record on me. We have passed judgment on others based on race, social status, their reputation before we even gave the person a chance. Some of you just heard something about somebody and you don't even like them. Some of you don't like people because your friend don't like them. Well, your friend can be foolish. Y'all ain't helping me. I don't like people because somebody else like them. I get to know people for myself. And here's some bad news for you. We all can be friends. If you don't like them, that don't mean I don't have to like them. And don't get mad at me because I'm talking to somebody you don't want to talk to. I'm saved. I'm too old for that. I'm not running the halls of Jackson High School no more. I'm running this world, and the time is running out, and we're too petty to be wasting time acting like children. You ain't going to tell me who to talk to. I talk to who I want to talk to. Because y'all don't get along don't mean we don't get along. Look at somebody say, that's your problem. We have passed judgment on others based on race, social status, their reputation before we even gave that person a chance. We let somebody, amen, give us a report on people without checking the facts ourselves. We have looked on others and immediately passed judgment. 6B and 7 talks about grudges. Do not rich men oppress you. The grudge and draw you before the judgment seat. Do they blaspheme that word the name by which ye are called? James challenged the church to consider situations within their own lives. They had suffered oppression from the same rich people they sought to impress. The same people you're trying to impress are the same people that oppress. I believe it's in Proverbs when they say, envy not the oppressor and choose none of his ways. Are y'all are y'all walking with me? The same, I, 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 I didn't understand how we leave a certain place. We leave Egypt, but we bring Egypt with us. We leave a place so we can have spiritual freedom to come here to oppress and put people in bondage. Envy not the oppressor and choose none of his ways. Those who oppressed them were not interested in their faith, only in what advantage they could obtain from them. James wanted them to consider how it felt when you've been mistreated. Oh, we could stay there all day. I only got six minutes. Remember how it felt when you was mistreated, but now you the one mistreating. You forgot quickly how it felt when you was on the other side. But it ain't no fun when the rabbit got the gun. You failed to remember how it felt when you was the oppressed. But now that you in charge, you're doing the same thing you didn't like when it was done to you, preach Holy Ghost. James said, remember the pain and despair you felt. It wasn't pleasant. Now, how do you think you make folk feel when you all nasty and mean and disrespectful, but you want to be respected from A to Z? Nobody can disrespect you 
but you justified in disrespecting everybody. Y'all got quiet on me. We, we dealt with the practice of prejudice. We dealt with the potential for prejudice. Here it is. Here's the peril of prejudice, verses 8 through 10. Finally, we discover the great peril associated with prejudice. Notice, notice 9 through 10. It is sinful. Everybody shout sinful. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin. Greg didn't say that. And are convinced of the law as transgressors. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of it all. James is very clear. If we have respect to persons, favoring some and discriminating against others, it is a sin. We cannot justify prejudice and discrimination. We cannot justify prejudice and discrimination. The record is scratched. We cannot justify prejudice and discrimination. Those who engage in such activity are guilty of sin, not before God, but before, not before Greg, but before God. I'm troubled by those who try to justify prejudice on religious grounds. I have heard those who try to manipulate scripture to justify their prejudice. Are you with me, Rashida? The word of God cannot be clearer. Prejudice and discrimination towards others is sin. If we are guilty of such, we must confess our sin and repent of it. As the church, we must be willing to identify such behavior as sinful and purge any remnants of it from the body of Christ. We cannot please the Lord with prejudice and bitterness towards others in our heart. He said, if any man say, I love God, 1 John 4 and 20, we, y'all, 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 we, we did it last week, and hate his brother, he's a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he have seen, how can he love God whom he have not seen? And this is the commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother. You can't hate your brother and say you love God. But let me tell you something, y'all. It's it's preventable. It's preventable. Verse 8. Verse 8 says it's preventable. If ye fulfill the royal law according to Scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Help me, Margaret. Ye do well. James refers to this as the royal law. It is the second of the great commandments Jesus gave us. We are expected to love God and love others as we love ourselves. James knew prejudice and partiality would never survive in the presence of love. Y'all don't know when to shout. Love kills prejudice. Love (laughs) kills partiality. See, when you love everybody, you treat everybody right. Some of y'all pick and choose who you're going to love, and that's why you treat people differently. James knew prejudice and partiality would never survive the presence of love. He knew if the church loved others as they loved themselves, prejudice would cease to exist. Can I say this to the New Harvest Church in particular? James knew if the church loved others, as they loved themselves, prejudice would cease to exist. Others would not be discriminated against or marginalized because they would be genuinely loved. Herein lies the solution for the current turmoil, not only in our church, but in our nation today. If we would heed the word of God, not he Republicans, not he Democrats, because I got both news for you. You can put Republicans and Democrats in the same bag and you don't get the same thing. It's not about the donkey. It's not about the elephant. It's about the lamb called God. Stop letting folk divide you. It ain't about being, uh, if, if the truth be told, I need to know. I'm not voting 
for Biden because he's a great candidate. Sometimes you just don't have a choice. Y'all don't like me. If we heed the word of God and love others as we love ourselves, prejudice and bigotry will cease to exist. I'm not naive. I know y'all say he's always naive. He's idealistic. He's naive. I'm not naive enough to believe everyone would do this. I, I, I'm not crazy, y'all, because I've been here 20-some years, and some of y'all still ain't get it. Yeah, December 10th, I'll be here 20 years, and some of y'all... All y'all here right now, won't, 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 Y'all ain't stutting this, what I'm talking about. I'm not naive. But if real change is going to come to America, it begins with the man or woman in the mirror. You around here, amen, trying to change the man in the White House. We gonna change the man in your house. Cause no matter what man or woman's in the White House, until you change in your house, your situation will always be the same. We gonna vote yourself out. We gonna impeach you. If communities would begin to love their neighbors, it will impact cities and entire countries. If we know how to love our neighbors, black on black crime will go down. I'm talking to black people now. We can't expect people to love us if we don't love us. This would eventually impact not only our cities, it impact our states and make a significant difference. As long as this world stands, prior to the Lord's return, we will be forced to deal with the curse of sin. Sin is the root of the problem. Y'all trying to make the root of the problem race. The root of the problem is not race. The, I told you it's right and wrong. The root of the problem is sin. It's sin. Sin makes us hate one another. You ain't born prejudice. It's taught. Sin makes you not like certain people. It's a sin problem. Sin is the root of the problem in America, y'all. We say God bless America, but America needs to start blessing God. Sin prevents us from loving others. Sin prevents, amen, we can prevent additional prejudice through love. Love will conquer hate. Love will conquer prejudice. The great words of Dr. Martin Luther King, evil will never, I'm paraphrasing, eradicate evil. No, darkness will never eradicate darkness. Are y'all hearing me? Mm -hmm. Good will always prevail over evil. Light will always prevail over darkness. And love will always prevail over hate. Conquering prejudice with love, the practice of prejudice, the potential for prejudice, the peril of prejudice. In my conclusion, we are never more like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as when we love like him. Our loving Lord is not pleased with the hatred and bigotry that has consumed our nation. He ain't concerned about your party affiliation. He's concerned about are you affiliated with him. If you have been guilty, you need to come and repent. We must love others as we love ourselves. We are all different, and yet Christ died to save us all. <laughs> We are all different. But guess who we die for? All of us. Not some of us. 
Heaven will be filled with those from every tribe, tongue, and every nation. May we never be guilty of discriminating against others. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. I was sinking deep in sin. They go that sin word. Far from the peaceful shore. Verily, verily, the staying within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters, he lifted me now safe. Am I? Look at your neighbor and say, love lifted me. I had a first class ticket to hell. But love turned that plane around. Oh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't have to like you, but I have to love you. Thank you, James. Thank you, word of God, for showing us the same things that happened in the early church. Are happening in this church. Don't let politics divide you to the point when you see a bumper sticker on either side. It moves you either way. Y'all missed that. It's amazing what moves believers, so-called believers. I found me a new channel. I watch the ID channel now. I done got off of CNN and NSD. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't do it. I watch the ID channel because if Sean try to kill me, I know how it's going to go down. Amen. <laughs> Find something else to watch. Find another channel. Find, read the book. Because I just believe, I just believe, I just believe this this atmosphere we're in are, are, is provoking us not to love, but it's provoking us to hate. It's dividing us. And guess what? It's by design. United we stand. Divided we fall. It's not about the lamb. It's not about the elephant, Republican. It's not about the donkey, the Democrat. It's about the lamb of God. Jesus Christ. And when you know Jesus, oh man, when you know Jesus, you can let bygones be bygones. When you know Jesus, I'm going to put it like this. When you know Jesus, I really don't care who you vote for. Because my hope is built and nothing less than Jesus' blood. In righteousness, I dare not trust in the sweetest. Y'all gonna help me? But I'm what? What, I, what I'm doing? Holy leaning to his hand. Come on, praise team. Father God, we thank you now for this word. We pray that it penetrate the heart of humanity. It's not about black and white, it's about wrong and right. It's not about Democrat or Republican. It has always been about you. The song opened up this morning. It's not about us, but it's about Jesus. Teach me how to love people that are different than me. Teach me how to love folk that don't look like me. Teach me how to love people that don't agree with me. Teach me, God, because... I want them to see you before they ever see me. God, I don't want to be an ambassador. I want to be an ambassador. I don't want I want to represent you in the highest standard. If you out there and don't know the Lord as your Savior, pray this prayer with me. Father, forgive me of all of my sins, creating me a clean heart, renewing me the right spirit. I believe you sent Jesus 
to die. And just like he sat at the well with a unpopular woman, like he told Zacchaeus to come down, and like he went and ate with publicans and tax collectors, teach us not to be partial and prejudiced. Teach us how to take you to humanity. Oh, we thank you today. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for the plan of salvation. Save right now in Jesus' name. If you pray that prayer with me, you'll save, find a church, amen, with Bible teaching and has a great foundation in the word and watch what God do. He will change your mind. He will change your heart. He will change, watch this, your interpersonal skills. Amen. He will make you pleasant again. Amen. Amen. I, I want to be pleasant. I don't want to always walk around like I got nails in my mouth. Amen. I want to be pleasant because I want, I want humanity to know God lives because he lives in me. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. The praise team going to take us out. simple song says I lift my hands in total adoration unto you you reign on the throne for you are God and God alone because of you my cloudy days are gone I can sing to you this song I just want to say that I love you more than anything can you lift your hands and say that with us everybody I lift my hands I lift my hands in total adoration of to you, you reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone, because, because of you my cloudy days are gone, I can sing to you this song, I just want to say that I Love you more than anything. Listen, I know it might be your favorite part, but it's definitely mine. Listen, can we encourage you today? I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than Come on, family. Yes, I love you. I love you, Jesus. Woo. I worship and I worship and adore you. Just one, just want to tell you, Lord, I love, Lord, I love you more than anything. Oh, I see you worshiping. I worship and I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you. Just want to tell you. Just want to tell you, just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Now lift your hands all over the sanctuary, open your mouth, and declare to our God that you love him. He's still the way maker. He's still a miracle worker. He's still a heart fixer. There's 
nobody like our God. Who wouldn't love a Savior that keeps forgiving us over and over? He keeps forgiving us over and over. And we bless his name and we give him the glory. Yeah. Lord, I love you. I love you, Jesus. I worship him. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yes, I love you. 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 I worship. I worship. I worship your name. I worship. I worship, I worship, I worship. I thank you, 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 I thank you. You didn't do half to do it. I thank you. So glad you did it. I thank you. So glad you did it. I thank you. I'm so glad you did it. I thank you. You didn't change your mind. I thank you. I bless 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 you. Now open your mouth and bless him in this house. Come on, lift your voice and declare to our God that he's the only one. Come on. Come on. Come on. We worship your name. We worship your name. We adore your name, Lord. Yes. Lord, I love you more than anything. You're better than life. You're better than life. Lord, I love you more than anything. You're better than life. 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 You laid down your life for me. You're better than life. You did it on the cross. You're better than life. You didn't have to do it. You're better than life. You didn't have to do it. You're better than life. You're better than life. Better than life. The air that we breathe. You're better than life. 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 Lord, I love.